I can't tell people enough that the Cleveland Cavaliers yeah. are a team that you must watch. This team right here is a playoff team if they can stay healthy. They're impressive to watch. Keep an eye on Cleveland, man. They're, they're the probably the most surprising team in the league right now. You heard it here first. Welcome to the front office. I am Bobby Marks. I am joined by the president of basketball <laughs> operations. How does that sound? And one of the best point guards to come out of Middlebury College, Kobe Altman. I was a borderline point guard. I played pretty well, but ever since I've left, that program has been a juggernaut. So Jeff Brown up there does a great job at Middlebury, and um, I hope they make it back to the Final Four this year. Well, we're going to go through 10 questions here, right? Kind of like I'm interviewing a draft prospect, but we're going to kind of turn the tables around uh, with you. And before we do so, I have a quick apology. So before the season started, we do this thing called future power rankings. You know where the Cleveland Cavaliers rank in the future power rankings, which looks out the next three years? Oh, oh we know, but I, I didn't know it was the next three years. I thought it was it's, just this year. We had the Cavaliers ranked dead last. Yeah, I thought so, it was just this year. So I'm actually, I'm learning something. So we do offer a quick uh, apology to you no because um, as everyone knows, Cleveland is one of the great success stories right now in the NBA. Kevin Love again. It's a love fest here in Cleveland. All right, let's go. So you've played, as we talked about in, at Millbury. You sold real estate, commercial real estate. <laughs> yeah. You coached in college. Your journey has been kind of all over the place. You've hit a lot of different angles. You've joined the Cavaliers, pro personnel, eventually GM, and now president. How, how has all those different journeys kind of made an impact and put you in this in this position right now? Uh, they've been incredible. You know, you graduate from a school like Middlebury, which is a top five liberal arts school uh, in the country. You think you got to go make money right away. And so I, I went into real estate and commercial real estate, and it was a wonderful uh, position. And it helps me to this day because as a broker, you have to make sure the cast of characters on both sides feel satisfied. And that's what we do a lot in front office world is make deals, um, you know, put trades together that satisfy both parties. Um, and being able to be transactional was something I learned very early on right out of college. And so that was, was enormously helpful. Um, and then we've been passionate about basketball for a long time. And I've been trying to break in for a long time. I was at your doorstep, um, you know, in, in New Jersey, uh, asking, how do I get in, Bobby? And you know, I'm, I'm fascinated with this, this front office side, but ended up going to the coaching side uh, for, for about the first five years before I was able to break into the NBA. And so getting both sides of the, uh, of the, of the, the coin, if you will, was huge for me. Um, and having respect for the coaching staffs and how hard that job is. Um, and then coming over to the front office side, uh, which is a lot more talent evaluation and team building. So um, each stop along the way has certainly been enormously helpful for me. A little known fact, uh, it feels like it was 20 years ago, but I think it was probably <laughs> like 11 years ago, maybe even longer that, yeah, I, Kobe came over to our offices at um, 390 Murray Hill Parkway, kind of an <laughs> isolated <laughs> isolated area of East Rutherford, kind of a yeah, giant fact. stadium looming in the background. I remember giant stadium looming in the background and it would take me, I get lost each time I, I tried to make that trip. It was really, you had to go over some trail, like some, some train <laughs> tracks. Remember that? I think that was the only thing <laughs> looming in that background was giant stadium. There was not much back there, but, um, but I had the opportunity before Kobe broke in. And um, when you're cutting your teeth kind of in the coaching ranks to um, sit down with you and, you know, kind of, I don't know if it were, helped you, but give you some advice to, to as far as try to navigate um, your path to get into this league. Because as you know, it is, it is challenging to, to kind of get in uh, into the NBA as far as getting your, in your front uh, foot in the front door. And it's, it has certainly worked out for, for you. And you've, you've certainly have earned everything that's come your way so far. Thank you. Um, this is, could be a, this is going to be a loaded question. You might have like 10 different answers to this. What's the most challenging part of this job? So, how, you know, it, I think I say this all the time when people ask me this, um, communication, it, it's, it's enormously hard. And you know this as well, Bobby, because you started out when front offices were pretty small to where they are now. And they, they've grown. This is my 10th year in the league. And each year our front office grows and the coaching staffs grow. And the people that we see, you know, back of house 
So that's the, your performance team, your strength and conditioning, uh, your mental health specialist, your nutrition specialist, your, 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 your kitchen. It just grows enormously. And, you know, the decisions that are made in the front of the house, um, you want people to ha have awareness of that and, and feel a part of that, even though they might not be in the room. And as you grow your staff, um, that gets harder and harder and more challenging. Um, and we want to be an inclusive place. We want people to be involved. Uh, but there's people working regionally. You know, there's people out of the country. You know, how do you keep everyone aligned and on the same page and feel like they're in the know, um, you know, before Woj drops a bomb and they're, they're reading about it on the Internet. So um, that's become enormously challenging and something that we, we work on every day. So we live in a world of COVID. What's the biggest difference for you running a front office when you look back pre-COVID, right? So March of um, 2020 to now. Travel for sure. Um, and for us, probably the most difficult part was the lack of international travel um, and making, making assumptions off tape and, and video, um, which is really difficult. Uh, so we, we, we missed that part of it. I think now we're back, we're getting back to it, but it's not the same. You can't just walk into a practice anymore, right? You have to figure out what the protocols are, um, and, it, and if it's safe and if you feel safe doing it um, and traveling during this time is difficult. The other thing I think, and, and you know this too, Bobby, that I miss the most is during training camp, you'd have visitors, right? You'd have coaches from every walk of life, from D1 to D2, D3, uh, high school coaches, AU coaches, they'd come every training camp. And you'd have this different cast of characters that was around that you just want to interface with. Um, and, and so I miss you know, just having visitors to, to come by and see what you do. It's not lost on me that we do, do something really special. And so you want to bring people into that world. And, and that was obviously heavily restricted this past couple of years. So we all have superstitions, right? <laughs> I, I, I've talked to you about this. I said when I was in Brooklyn that uh, I would give money to people <laughs> when I was driving to a game <laughs> and we wound up winning 10 games in a row. And I thought that was probably the reason why. Darren Same Williams, dude, you got to keep giving yeah, well, I, yeah. I thought that's probably why Darren Williams was playing so well or Joe <laughs> Johnson. It was because I was giving yeah. money, but either at the game, same, you're sitting in the same seat before the game could be at halftime. If you're winning, do you have any superstitions the day of the game? Yeah. So um, it's funny as we're, we're, we're filming this or recording this, um, one of my high ranking front office people, um, Andre Patterson, just took a job, a really great promotion uh, with the Portland Trailblazers as their assistant general manager. And so we're really happy for him. It's a little bittersweet, you know, but when teams come after your people, it's the ultimate form, form of flattery. But he would sit next to me almost every game uh, at home or on the road. And he would have a fresh uh, batch of gum. And uh, it was, it was, you know, and it packed a punch too, you know, about five minutes. It was, it was intense. Um, and I needed that, that gum right before the national anthem. He hit me and get me that piece of gum. I needed that uh, throughout the game. And um, the flavor goes pretty quickly. Uh, but if we're playing like trash at halftime, that gum's going in the, in the trash. If we're good, if we're, we're hooping, I'm, I'm chewing on that gum the whole game. And, and by the time the game's over, it's dry. There's no flavor. But if we're playing well, for some reason, I feel like I have to keep that, that gum going. And uh, I'm going to miss that tradition with Andre. We're going to figure out uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big responsibility. So we got to figure out in-house who can, who can live up to that. Win or lose, right? Game's over. You're driving home. Who's the first person you call? It's, it's probably uh, my assistant GM, Mike Gansey, uh, to complain about something. We could win or, <laughs> we could win or lose. You're, you're always complaining about something. Um, so he, he keeps me level-headed. And, uh, you know, we're uh, fortunate to have him in-house because he's, he's very even-keeled. Yeah, it's, uh, for me, it was my wife after a loss <laughs> saying, honey, I think we're going to get fired. Uh, how much is the mortgage on the house? That was towards the back end of uh, 2014. But yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's funny, you know, there's so much, you know, sometimes, you know, certain teams have, uh, or, you know, front office have a rule where, you know, we're not going to talk to the coach after loss, we're going to kind of, we have that cooling off period, but you got to vent to somebody, sure. right? And it's, Correct. Probably not going to be, you know, a family member, but it's going to be somebody who can relate to you. And uh, I did that with Greg Polinski, who was our director of uh, player personnel. Every car ride, I'd He's call, the best. I would call him and we would just, 
I would just vent or we would laugh or, you know, you just, and it, by the time you're home, if you lost it, yeah, it still bothers you, but it does make you, you know, feel a little bit, uh, a little bit better there. So definitely. Um, so as you know, um, there's a lot of stress, right? Working in the NBA, a lot, you know, wins are, we're, hey, everybody's judged by wins and losses. It's just there. And we live in a social media world. Like when you want to get away from things, right? Like if you, tr if you try to get away from working for Cleveland and kind of refresh your mind, what, what's, what's one thing that you do there? Well, we're, we're fortunate. Um, and, and, and I like to dispel the notion that Cleveland, Ohio is not beautiful. <laughs> Um, but, but we have a, a beautiful lake and it's called Lake Erie. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, it's remarkable. I mean, I can go take the kids and go for a walk and be on the lake in two minutes. And it, it feels like an ocean. I mean, it's a great lake and that water is, is calming and soothing to me. Um, and tries to take my mind off of, of, of the craziness that's going on. Um, but you do, you need, you need, a, you need a, a mental release to take your mind off things and sort of rejuvenate. Um, and so if it's too cold, and that's one thing Cleveland is, try to find a, a crappy movie or something that's literally mindless um, and, and shut the, the league pass off for a couple hours and, and do that. Who's the one, um, the one mentor that you've leaned on the most during your, you know, it could be, you know, during the cult when you're, you know, um, coaching in college could be right now, but who's that one person that you leaned on the most? So I'd say a couple like my MBA career, David Griffin, um, who was a big part of me being in Cleveland now. And obviously he's the exec executive vice president for the Pelicans down in New Orleans. Um, and we talk all the time, but in terms of my entire career, you know, I would have, to, I would have to say Sean Ford from USA basketball is the men's national team director. And Bobby, you know, this, I think in, he would hate me saying this, but like he has to be the most underrated yeah. basketball influencer of all time. Like no one knows like Sean's name, but when you think about it, like for decades now, he has had influence and, and, and direction in all those teams. And so you're talking about the best players ever to play the game, gold medalist, some of the best Hall of Fame coaches, right, to, to coach those teams. He has to interface with those agents. He has to interface with front office. So when you think about the, the body of work that Sean has put together behind the scenes, because he likes it that way, he has to be the most underrated influencer of our time. And, and so I was fortunate to meet him through my sports management program, UMass Sports Management. Um, and they assigned me him as a mentor. And he gave me my first opportunity at USA Basketball to be uh, an intern. And I mean, it blew my mind, but like to have that body of knowledge and to lean on him as not just a mentor, but a friend over the years, nobody has better experiences than him. And his best line is, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out because everything's constantly changing, as you know, with the USA basketball teams and uh, we'll figure it out. And, and so learning from him over the years has been phenomenal. And I will say, like, if he ever puts out a book, it'd be the best book because he has the best stories. How could you not when you're around? that level of talent and basketball minds for so long. He is the ultimate glue guy. Yeah. Right. And you're right. As yeah. Somebody that probably people don't know about um, one of the, one of the nicest people uh, in, in this business here. And you're, if he ever did put out a book, <laughs> I think a lot of us would, uh, well, we would probably know some of the stories yeah. there, but I think it would be, uh, you know, a must, uh, a must read. What's the last TV show you binged watched? That's easy. That that's uh, recent. Uh, Curb your enthusiasm, season eleven, and it it's like it's like fine wine. It just keeps getting better as he ages. He he keeps getting better. How long does it take you to watch a show? Uh, um, if there's twelve episodes, how long does it take you? You put it do it, it takes in two a, days. It takes longer than you think, <laughs> right? Um, but we tried. This, we actually tried because we we love Curb and we don't know how much longer it's going to go on. We actually did it week by week this time. If you weren't in this crazy business called the NBA, what would you be doing as a career? I I, yeah, we talked about the commercial real estate um, and, and certainly something around real estate. Uh, I still am fascinated with large scale development, high end development and how you make those spaces welcoming um, and modern 
And so, you know, I think we could do a little bit of that here in the NBA when we talk about our, our physical spaces and how we make those inviting for not just the players, but their families. Uh, when we redesigned the family room this year, I had a large part in that. And it was kind of let me uh, touch my real estate gene that I love, I miss, uh, gives me that fix. Um, but I think, you know, even well after my career, I, I think I'm going to get into sort of some real estate development stuff that I, I, I think is just fascinating. Best piece of advice you've received? I would probably go back to my mentor, Sean Ford. Um, he had a great line that said, he said, don't talk yourself out of an opportunity until you have a decision to make. And what he meant by that was, you know, don't talk yourself out of an opportunity or a decision before it's actually offered to you. And back then it was more so employment decisions. So like I would call him up and say, you know, I'm, I'm tackling between the GA for this job or manager at this university. And he'd say, was it offered to you? And I'd say, no, but they're talking to me. And well, well don't, before you tuck yourself out of something, you know, has it been offered to you? And I think I use that all the time now. We're, we're talking about trades with my, my front office. Um, we'll talk ourselves out of an opportunity before it's even presented, right? Like you go down a path of being negative about this, about that, and here's the implications. And, well, it hasn't even been offered to us, guys. We don't have a decision to make yet. And so I think he, he means be patient, be thoughtful, uh, think everything through before uh, you, you dismiss something. And I think it's a very valuable uh, piece of advice. All right, we got two bonus questions. Yep. All right. Your most proud accomplishment, not MBA related. All right. So it's not winning the championship. Yeah, no, I, certainly my wife and my, my two kids, um, they just turned four and two, both December babies. Um, and every day you go home and you realize that is what you work for. And that's your, your most important accomplishments. And so it's, it's really it's really cool. I think uh, kids actually give you a better perspective as hard as this job is um, in terms of time management and balance. And so, yeah, certainly that's, that's an easy one. Uh, the family, um, and, uh, we're, we're really, really lucky. All right. Last one. Um, what's tougher <laughs> commercial real estate or building a <laughs> roster? <laughs> oh man. It's, um, like I said, each, like the real estate market, and, and dealing with that cast of characters and dealing with players and, and their ambitions, like very similar, like the different cast of characters that you have to deal with in every walk of life. And they're all great people. They're all super competitive, unbelievable value that they bring to the table. Um, that's a tough one. Uh, but no, I'd, I'd say try probably building a roster <laughs> <laughs> here in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, but uh, now we're, we're fortunate. We're excited about the future here with the Cavs. Um, and it, it was not easy. There were some daunting times, but we kept pushing forward and uh, a lot of excitement in this building right now. Well, you guys should be. It's as I said, it's one of the, uh, the great success stories of this season. A lot of unfinished business. As you know, this is the kind of a roller coaster this league here it changes uh, it changes pretty quick it's and, fragile uh, it is fragile it, it sure is and uh, i want to thank you thank you for coming on episode one i will send the royalties to um <laughs> cleveland when we get them <laughs> and um that's kobe altman president thank of you, basketball <laughs> operations for the cleveland cavaliers newly minted president of basketball operation that that title sounds nice on you thanks for coming on kobe thank you bobby i appreciate it Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.